Hey, this is your girl Chelsea with the Melanin University, and I am back with another special guest, my beautiful friend, Rosina, aka Miss Wild African Rose. How you doing, honey? I'm doing well, Chelsea. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Anything for you? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now, tonight we are going to be talking about an interesting, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, but our main topic is uh, work from home because both of us, we work from home, you know, and, you know, I've been doing it before COVID, but I know some people have, you know, transitioned into it. So we're going to talk about the struggles, the, the, the wonderful moments, and the <laughs> completely insane moments of working from home. <laughs> and trying to protect your mental health in the workspace which I feel like is very important especially at these times when we haven't been going anywhere yes but I first want to start with Miss Rosina how have you been doing like overall overall ma'am overall how have you been doing overall with all this with everything that's going on in the world now the world is a crazy place to be, but you know, when it's all said and done, I'm glad that I'm here in it, you know, simply to be able to change something I did yesterday, always trying to improve on something, even though at times it does get stressful and all of that. But I would say for the most part, mentally, I am becoming a more stronger person I'm learning how to deal with certain things certain people certain situations mm -hmm. and I'm just preparing myself for what I think is going to be one of the greatest seasons yeah we went through you know the pandemic we're still going through it now mm -hmm. I did go through COVID myself but Ooh. I recovered so I feel like it takes for us to go through things where we don't think it's going to get better for us to actually come out of it and see that it's getting better. So pretty much to answer your question, Chelsea. <laughs> Long story short, um, I'm doing well. Just trying to keep a positive mindset with all I do. Positive mindset, I believe, brings forth positive results. So I'm trying not to dwell on, you know, those those trying times because everything's going to be okay, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I can definitely agree with you on that. And I'm so happy to hear that you able, well, you were able to be healed from yes. the COVID, you know, because I know that's definitely a scary thing. A lot of people have lost their lives. There's still mm -hmm. a lot of people daily that are just, you know, dying from COVID, especially with this new strain that's going along. Yes. So all we got to do is stay sanitized, prayed up, and masked up. <laughs> Amen to that. All of that. Mask, wear your mask, people. Please. Yes. Sanitize. Wash your hands. <laughs> Real. It's serious out here. So how has working from home been for you? Like, is this, because I know you work currently. Well, how about you tell us what you do? And then I can ask. Because <laughs> I will be a spitting out questions. Don't mind me. I've been smoking. No, you good. So I remember you pretty much said your work at home position happened before COVID. That's the same for me. Um, I started working October 2019 from home and it was, you know, it was quite challenging because, um, you know, I'm a single parent and then my daughter getting her ready for school, making sure I was able to do everything around her schedule and mine. It was a bit frustrating um but I made sure to get it done now I work for Apple and I like to call myself I don't really know what the terms are but I call myself since I've been there since 2019 of October I call myself an account and billing technical support specialist I say specialist sometimes I'll be like senior advisor but I say specialist because I know what I'm doing. I specialize in those things. Hey, so um, <laughs> it was it was challenging, especially like with any new job, learning things. And you can relate to this, like with Apple, like at first it does, it's a lot. Even if you do know like the basics and have an iPhone, 
it can come off as being a lot because there's still things that they have not taught you or that you don't know that you have to be taught. But like after a while, it, it becomes okay, but then it's the repetition. And then you constantly have to talk and talk and talk. You never really get a break. So that's what I would say I dislike about it. Not so much the job, but the repetition of talking. Sometimes I just want to be able to type. But I mean, overall, I'm thankful for my job. I'm thankful that I still have the job, you know, because yeah. I know, unfortunately, it's a lot of people. And I pray for these people daily, the people that lost their jobs due to COVID. I really do. Like, I really wish COVID never came about, but I just hope that we're all able to manage. And I'm hoping in time, people are able to get back on their feet and start working again. So what was your question again? <laughs> no, no, you answered it. You know, you answered I just like, how do you feel like, you know, what's your experience with working from home? Like, how did you start? Like, you you completely answered the question. Like, I, I know when, because I know we both had this, we may not have had the same position, but we worked for the same company because I know I've worked with them through technical support. I really didn't do too much billing with them, um, just solely tech support. So I, you know, I felt like I was Apple queen wherever I went, like any, any time that I, any time of period that I've spent outside of Apple and I've went back multiple times. That's one thing about me. Like that's my one one go-to is going back to Apple if nothing all fails. <laughs> Cause I feel like that was one position that I felt like I knew like from the back of my hand with my eyes closed. And yeah. that information changes daily. Like, so it can be stressful. Like I, the definitely the repetition of having to do it constantly over and over and over again. But I mean, I feel like a lot more, I feel, I feel like work from home jobs, every company needs to have mental health days oh because my. some, like sometimes it's very unbearing, like, especially it's different than being at a call center, going to work, having to travel. Cause I find sometimes I can do that better. I mean, I've been working from home since 2012. I've completely worked from home. Like I think I've only traveled outside of the work from home space from 2012. One time is that, that was when I actually worked at a brick and mortar out in Las Vegas with a shuri on. Mm -hmm. So, and I craved, I wanted that. That's how, that's even why I even went back, but it took me a long time because I got complacent. I loved working from home. Like I love being able to just sit at my desk, make my own coffee. Like I could spend my breaks doing what I want, doing laundry. Like, and I had no excuse, you know, to have a dirty house because I was always there. Exactly. <laughs> but like, I really honestly feel like sometimes we need, if we're not going to have that communication with each other, like as far as like, you know, we can't meet up with coworkers, like unless you know someone that works with you that's around like in your city. Yeah. But like, I feel like we, we need mental breaks. Like, I feel like we, uh, like breaks, 15 minutes. I feel like they need to at least give us like 20 minute to 25 minute, like mental breaks. Cause I feel like sometimes after like a 15, 20 minute break or like a 20 to 25 minute, almost 30 minute break, like, like 30 minutes is cool. Like, I don't feel like it's cool to eat, but it's cool to like, just chill <laughs> like, just so I can recontemplate myself and be able to get through the next four and a half hours of somebody yelling at me because they don't know their apple id or they don't know something yes like mental breaks are needed especially in the position that we're in and i just want to say like with that a lot of people think we have it easier because we are at home and <laughs> it's, it's just, if anything, it's a hard, it's hard staying, exactly. like you have to be very determined. It, it took, it took a lot of years in training to get me to where I am now and how I can handle things. Like I know a lot of people go through a deep, dark depression because they don't have any other, like people who live alone and work from home and they have no other contact with anyone except the people that they talk to over the phone that are just cussing at them and yelling at them. Mm -hmm. Like people, like, that's why I'm just like, people, when you call in the customer service, you don't know who you're talking to. And especially right now, which, you know, with our, 
the state that our economy is in, you don't know what someone is going through over that phone. That's I true. Think you may be upset and you, or, you know, everything is running down, but having a nicer attitude would, would help us help you. <laughs> Cause like, I feel like you're so ungrateful when you're calling in and you're bitching over something that has nothing to do with me. Yes, I'm, I'm the face of the company. I'm supposed to help you and I'm definitely going to, and I'd be glad to, but if you're cussing me out, I don't want to help you. Exactly. Like, I don't. And then I'm looking to see when my break is because I need a break before I cuss you out. <laughs> for real like that's another thing we have bad days too but we have to sit there and take those phone calls as though we're not going through things ourselves like working from home it really does take that type of I would say that right individual because everything's at home I like it because you know saves money on gas saves money on traveling it just saves money in general yes. but when it comes to dealing with these customers that are irate and want to try to take it there because they they know we can't respond in that way when we're not supposed to and it's like do you not realize who called who i didn't call you unless it's a callback <laughs> Yeah. But I didn't give you a call. You called me for help. So how do you expect, excuse me, let me, let me start talking like them. How the fuck do you expect for me <laughs> to help you out if you're talking to me in this tone? Like, I understand you're upset that your Apple ID password has been forgotten and you think that I can help you retrieve that password I don't know your password so I'm trying to help you the best way I know how the way I was taught and if you don't want to accept that then your password has just been forgotten like I'm I'm sorry I don't have the answers but while I'm here I'm going to talk to you in a pleasant tone I'm going to show you respect but that there has caused me to want to quit many times just based off of how they treat me over the phone. And a part of me is like, if I wasn't working at home, would they really even talk to me like this? Like if it was a face-to-face -face thing? No, I don't you wouldn't. That. It's because it's over the phone. And that's what people have to say. You know, people always say, well, don't let it bother you. They can't see you. You know, they're just over the phone and they're mad. Like, you know, and they're not mad at you. They're mad at the company. Yes, I understand that. But I am the face of the company. I'm the one who got this call. So it's my duty to have to sit there and, <clears throat> and I can get them. It's like, I've noticed um, that I can get someone to de like, I can deescalate someone. That's not a problem. Even the most irate customers, I know how to deescalate. That's great customer service that comes with a long period of time of knowing how to tell the difference between when someone's bullshitting you and when someone actually does need help. Mm hmm but like, I, I don't understand why you would call in somewhere where I have your full name, your possibly your social, your address for sure, your phone number. Mm. Now, Go there with us. I'm not gonna say, but I know some people we'll take like, it there. that should have not been customer service agents and they have really took the stuff that customers say to heart and they done pulled up on customers. Wait, what? Yeah, child, like I know from a call center that I used to work in back in the day, I'm not gonna say no names. <laughs> uh, Convergence. Oh, <laughs> she got the name. <laughs> They're no longer that as of right now, but I know plenty of people who done pulled up on customers because they done said something, which is wrong. Those people should never do that but at the same time why would you call in somewhere when these people have your personal information do they okay i have a question do do you think some of the customers know that we have all of this information or do you think that when they call in and they're asking you know i can't talk right now the wine get into me but do you think that at times when they call in all we're asking for is like their names. You think that that's all they think that, well, I think that's all they think that we can see. No, I don't know. Absolutely not. 
because I've had customers call me talking about, I'm going to give you my social. I have no, there's been jobs that I don't even have access to your social. And I'm sitting here like, why would you give me your social for this? Like, it's like, I guarantee you people will call Netflix and be like, well, I can give you my social. Like, we don't use your social. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's, it's common. Like, sometimes I feel like, I feel like when I, the, the customers that I've talked to, America lacks common sense. That's very, that's very clear. I'm scared because like half the people that I'm talking to, like, and this is through my whole career being a customer service agent, like in any position I've had that in. Just talking to people generally over the phone, they lack common sense. They do not read anything that's a contract or paper. And they always call in blaming someone thinking that, a software update broke their device, but it's because they ain't been updating their phone. They phone broke. <laughs> yeah, they think that they know every answer. And it's like when we're trying to help by giving them the tools that we have acquired. Oh, you're wrong. Then why did you call me if you know how to fix your phone? <laughs> why? Please tell me. Just please, just just answer me one time. Why did you call Apple Support? if you have all the fucking answers of getting your device back to working again. Oh, the update, that's only gonna, I had this one guy, oh my God. He was pretty much. I mean, they, will, they, will, they will literally drown you in sorrows of death talking about the update is going to break it. No, I'm telling you this. And, and I don't understand how they don't understand when we say, sir, the phone needs to be updated regularly. Yes, if you have auto update on, it will eventually update. If you're connected to Wi-Fi, <clears throat> when your phone is locked and you're not using it. So usually in the middle of the night. Now, if you don't have auto update on and you're just manually going in there, you can always manually update the phone or check to see if there's any current updates. But you have to understand that the app developers are constantly updating the applications and they're always updated to our actual updates as well. So if your phone is outdated and is running updated apps, what do you think is going to happen? Eventually, <laughs> yeah, nothing happens right away with a phone. No. Eventually, months down the line, years. Let's say, I know some people that, that didn't update for over two years. And then their whole completely phone wipes. And you wonder why, because you were not following the directions and updating your phone. Unless Apple says, hey, do not use this update. <laughs> you need to update that phone. <laughs> and people don't get that. They don't, <laughs> they don't. Like I had this one man, um, I don't know if there are a lot of people that feel like this. He felt as though every time he updates the phone, the government is tracking his every move. And it's crazy because- <laughs> The government is tracking all of us, sir. Homeland this, Security this knows thing. exactly where we all are. Like, let, let, let's make that very clear. So for all the listeners that think like this man, that you think that you know, your phone is constantly, you know, sending someone a GPS signal. They can, yes, they can always can find you. How do you think they'd be finding people committing murders? They phone pings be pinging off the site of where the body was found. I need you to understand, <laughs> America, <laughs> we it are was, all trying to help you. It was crazy because he was literally he had the latest update, not the most recent. So mm -hmm. I'm like, for someone who actually fears that this is going on, you've been kind of keeping up to date with your updates. But now that this new one just came out, now they're tracking you. Why weren't they tracking you before? Like you just literally updated your phone probably, I'm gonna say like a month ago. You're caught up, I'd see if he had like 12.2, if that, that was a software update. If he had that, then I'd be like, okay, I understand. But he was caught up in just one, like behind one. So why, why, like calls like that? I do laugh about it for the simple fact that they will try to pick up a fight with you 
while you're trying to tell them and let them know what's going on. And I know my manager pretty much said like what you said about being able to like deescalate. My manager calls me, um, what's it called? He calls me, what? I just forgot what it was, a, some, a calming goat. He calls me a calming goat. Um, for those that don't know, because I didn't know what a calming goat was, a calming goat is like a goat that they bring out to like calm down other animals. You know, it's so like if there's a bull that pretty much is like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> 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 so I, don't know what, I don't know what noise bull is. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, 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 sound effect. <laughs> You say what? Okay, the sound effect. Wait, did you say that's what the lamb sounded like? Not the lamb. The bull. The bull. Chelsea, I don't know what the bull sounds like, but. <laughs> you said that's what the bull sounds like. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, he was pretty much Either saying how. It's really good, or you're just funny as hell right now. <laughs> it's probably both. <laughs> it's right. But, it's both. Um, yeah, you know, he was saying like, that's what the calming goat is for, to calm down the other animals. So he was saying, like, with my tone, I just have a very soft-spoken tone, an inviting tone. And I have gotten some customers that are constantly just nah, 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 yelling at me and just talking to me all nasty. But I always manage to keep the same tone because I also know when you have a calm tone and people are yelling at you, it, it makes them upset. Yep. It upsets them sometimes. Like, why is she still talking to me in this respectful tone? And it's like, because I'm trying to show you that I'm not going to take it to the level of where you are. I want for yep. you to bring that all the way down. Get on my level. What song was that by? Uh, uh, get on, get my, on level. my level. With, is it with? You can... Trillville, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. Well, this is bad. You have to Google it. <laughs> Alexa. Who sings, who sings Get On My Level? Get On My Level is by Chameleon Air. Chameleon Air? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Wait, it isn't? No. I thought it was like Trillville, Lil Scrappy. That that wasn't Chameleon Air. Alexa, play Get On My Level by Lil Scrappy. It was Trillville, Lil Scrappy. Any specific songs is only available with Amazon Music Unlimited. Okay, you know There's what? a station based on the vibe. Alexa. Trillville. Yeah. <laughs> John. Lil now Alexa act like them customers. Alexa. <laughs> Stop. See, look. Yeah, customers. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm Hold so on, let me see right quick. Huh? Let me see right quick. Get on my level. Yeah, we need to see. see look, we done got sidetracked. See, this yeah, is it was Trillville featuring Lil John. Okay, see, look, you got it. See, look, I was like, wait, I know they had one, but I'm like, wait. <laughs> But yeah, I try to bring them down to my level. That way we can actually have a conversation and be at peace and be at one because I could go there very easily, but I want to keep my job for one. For two, come on now, like, just stop. <laughs> just calm down. So yeah, Chelsea, um, at times, I just don't know. And with the mental health breaks, they are needed after calls like that. Because then it's like, if you don't take that break, get that break in, you don't know if the next call is going to be like that. Or the next call. You just really don't know who you're going to speak to. And it's very, very frustrating. Um, but again, I feel like you have to be that type of person that can just take these type of people and then realize that, you know, at the end of the day, they go about their day, you go about yours, you may not have to talk to them again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you just turn your computer off and you're done for the day. But those eight hours and possibly having to deal with eight hours of customers like that, it becomes a lot. It, it becomes a lot. Like, going through your own life struggles, your own day-to-day. Yeah. You could have the best day and then they call in and that just, just, I've actually cried. I had a customer so bad, they made me cry. And I had to step away from the computer. Like, little bitch, why the fuck is you crying over somebody over the phone? Like, yeah, like, you know what? I've, I done had some of them times and I don't know if I've ever cried, 
but <clears throat> I've gotten like really, really messed up to like, like actually upset. Like I was just fuming, just mad because, and I didn't want to go back to work. I was like, you know, I clocked out for the whole day. I was like, I can't do this. I'm just going to go home. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like if I stay, I'm going to lose my job. And, you know, I kept it real with my manager. I was like, you know, I, I need to, I, I think I need, I'm going to have a break. Um, I'm going to have a mental, mental break. So I need to go t- sit somewhere and get myself together. And she's like, you know, go ahead. And that was when I actually, I worked for Apple. So I was able to just take the day off, you know, get myself together, gather myself. Cause no one should get you that angry. Like no one over the phone, especially when you can't see them. But I mean, words from someone you don't know definitely hurt sometimes <laughs> like I don't care who you are having anyone talking to you crazy especially when you're trying to help them and be nice and they just don't want they just want to just run over you it makes it hard it makes it very hard and I don't ever act like that when I call when I call anyone like I always try to be like you know remain as let me see just as respectful as I can like I don't yeah. mess nobody out like I'm so nice like I say thank you I do the surveys because I know that matters because I understand how what, what it's like like even if the survey don't matter like the survey matters to some just like when I used to waitress or like I tip everywhere I go just like I know that I was expecting that tip when I used to waitress because you know you, you know I feel like when you've worked in certain places, you understand. <clears throat> that is true. That is the truth. And, and living, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. I wish everybody knew that. Yes. But yes. sometimes it feels as though us being on over the phone, they're not who we consider people. <laughs> yeah. They think we some robots. <clears throat> so how has schooling been with your little one since COVID in the beginning <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> in the beginning you know like when it first started in March she was like about to be going on to spring break so I had March April school ended in May I believe or beginning of June mm-hmm. so it was an adjustment for me, but it wasn't as bad as it is now. And I say that because she's been doing the virtual school thing from August up until now. And I feel like with a lot of kids and being at home, just like with mine, they get a little too comfortable with seeing their parents' faces all the day, all the day, all the time. And it's kind of as though some of them don't take that online school thing seriously because it's like, for one, I'm at home. This is where I can be myself. This is where, you know, I'm free to be myself. I can play, I can do this, I can, I'm at home. I'm not in school. So I feel like with mine, yeah, she's nine years old. She understands exactly what it is that she needs to do, mm-hmm. but it was easier for me to deal with it when the pandemic first started, like March, in my eyes, it started for me, March, 2020. Um, And I was able to deal with it through June, but now being that I've been dealing with it for a few months now, it's been a lot because not only do I work from seven until four, she starts school from eight to about two. So I have to try my best while talking to the customers to make sure that she's doing what she needs to do. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's stressful. It's nice to know that she's right next door. I don't have to worry about anything happening to her because she's right here with me. But along with me trying to work and make sure I'm getting my job done, I have to make sure that she's doing what she needs to do. So with all of that being said, it's not working well for me. And I have opted into sending her back to school next month because I feel like she's the type of child that does not do well in a virtual setting. She needs to be in school where she could actually see the teachers, communicate with the teachers, and have like a more hands-on experience. Now, from other people, 
it may work well, but for my child who has my personality traits and is very goofy and if it doesn't interest her, it's kind of hard for her to pay attention. She needs to be in school. So next month, sending her off to school with a mask and a smile and she needs to do what she needs to do because I just don't want anything else being added on that's, you know, stressful for me. And it's really been stressful having to deal with that situation because it's just stressful. I'm not going to lie. For me, it's it's been a lot. And I'm trying to keep my peace, my sanity. And, you know, I know that in the schools, they practice social distancing and all of that. So I'm like, also with her being nine, she needs to be around kids I'm all she knows I'm all she sees so I don't like that aspect of it because I think back to my fourth grade years I was in school with kids even though I had siblings at home she doesn't have that it's just me yes she has siblings in another state but she needs to be able to you know well I was about to say meditate with her peers that's not the word she needs to be able to like mediate wait no I'm still saying mediate <laughs> She needs to be able to mingle and be around other kids her age because she's around me entirely too much. And I feel like we all need that healthy balance as humans where we spend time, but we're apart. And she needs to be apart just for a few hours. That way I'll be able to, you know, just hear her in the background. <laughs> Yeah. What's she doing? Is she running around? Playing with her friend. Oh. So yeah. Yeah. It it'll get better. I'm just really hoping that this pandemic. Uh, I'm praying that things get better with this because I know a lot of parents have to go through with what I'm going through where they have to manage their own lives, manage the child. You still got to get them breakfast. You still got to get them lunch, you know, like while working from home. And it's a lot. So I just want to say for the people who think that this is really easy, it's not like you really have to prepare yourself for what you're going to get into. Um, it's nice to be able to spend more time with your children. But you also need to be able to spend time with yourself. That's correct. So yeah, I'm learning to, you know. <sighs> <laughs> Are you crying? It's so much just like, I've been dealing with this for a year now and it's a lot. It has caused me mentally at times to somewhat lose myself because Along with that, and I'm sorry I'm talking so much, no, but no. along with it, I have naturally always been the type of person that keeps to herself. Now, I say all of that to say when I was in Indiana, in Indiana, that's when I feel like I was the most social. That's when yeah. I had friends. I used to see you. You know, it was like I was able to socialize with people that were in my area because I knew them. You know, I would talk to them. But ever since I've been in this home setting, I cannot communicate with people on that level. Yeah, mind you, I have a few friends out here, but there's nothing better to me than being able to actually see people in person while you're at work. I miss that feeling of being able to be around each other. So my social life is not very social. All I have is my customers most of the time. So that's why I'm saying like being able to make time for yourself too. Mm -hmm. In that setting, that's where it becomes very important to take that time. Even if it's just an hour to get out, go say hi to somebody. Wear your mask though and say hi. Yeah. I don't <laughs> it keeps sanitizer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just, that's the part I don't like about it. Because like I said, even though I am like an introverted, person I'm a homebody I'm a loner I don't want to spend every day in the house yeah. yes it's what I signed up for I get it but I'm also the type of person that wants to be able to meet people and talk to people 
outside of a phone. So that's another thing. People, if y'all are thinking about working from home, think about that aspect of it. Eight hours literally stuck to a computer screen talking to people over the phone. And if you're the type of person that feels that you need to be in contact with people like directly, physically, I don't think it's for you because that can drive you crazy. Like, it's not for you. I'm sorry. But I made it. I did. No, go ahead. I was just going to say I made it for me. Even though it's still, it's a lot. It is. What I like about it is on my lunch break, sometimes I go to sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I'm about to say. You know, sleeping on lunch breaks is always like, especially on them 15 minute breaks, like I could just, like I could just close my eyes and I, I'm, no one's staring at me. I'm not like in this weird cold call center. Like, you know, I can comfortably wrap up in a blanket, you know, just, you know, take a, seven minute snooze or if it's a like in my lunch I can take however long I got <clears throat> but one thing I do is like I have two computers so I have an l-shaped desk so I work off of a laptop and then um I could work from my com- my main computer but I just choose to have everything separate I don't like having everything combined with my personal stuff yeah so um I just, like, I play Sims or, like, play the video game while I'm helping customers. Just so that, like, I don't feel like, I can, I can be like, okay, well, I definitely didn't just work. I actually did something that I like. I have a good book up here. I'll be reading chapters while I'm helping customers because a lot of my calls are quick. So I can, you know, just put something up on my iPad and be reading, like, you know, while I'm helping them because, I mean, I can multitask. That's one thing when you do work from home, you learn how to multitask like a mug. Like I can be doing seven different things at my desk and it's all in arm's reach. I can be placing an Uber Eats order, sitting here playing Sims and helping a customer out on the phone while on a FaceTime call trying to talk my mama through on mute how to actually change the settings on her computer to print. (laughs) (laughs) Like... (laughs) I can do it all, man. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, you know, you always, if you're working from home, if you're new, even if it's like, you know, you're still like, you know, one year in, two year in, like always like, you know, find different ways to make your workday go smoother. Like if you know, like, okay, well, I have to be at work at this time. I'm always saying, hey, get up an hour before you got to go to work. Mm. I don't care if you have to walk to the computer and it takes you five minutes to clock in. Make sure you're at your desk 15 minutes before your shift starts. Just so that you can get a, like, it's better when you make time slots because everything goes by quicker. You don't have no issues clocking in on time. Like, you know, that's what I do. Like, especially when I know that I work, like, in the afternoons, I know I can sleep. I always make sure, like, my alarm is always set for 8 a.m. So if I work at a morning shift, it's usually going to be like around 8.30 to 9 a.m. So I know that I'll always wake up like around 8 just so that I can be there. And then like if it's like if I go in in the afternoon, I wake up at 10. So Mm -hmm. I always wake up at least two to like an hour to two before my shift. So then I can just mentally prepare for it because I be doing what I need to do. If I have a doctor's appointment, I can do it then. Like, you know, it's, it makes it easy, but like, you have to make it work for you. I always say like, you know, have your snacks there. Like, you have stuff that you like. Like, if you like Rubik's cubes, have that. Like, have some crossword puzzles. Like, something that bides your time so that you're not just solely concentrating. Like, I mean, it's good to concentrate on the customer. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> like, do your job. But like, <clears throat> if you can, you know, start adding little, you know, multitasking things to do, it definitely helps. Stretch, stand up, don't sit down all day. <laughs> Drink water, because I mean, you get stiff sitting down. Like my back be hurting sometimes because I be sitting the whole time. That is true. So I'd be having to stand up. My Apple Watch helps me. 
So I definitely, you know, like my Apple Watch because I can just sit there and stand up, stretch, and, you know. When you say your Apple Watch helps you, what do you mean? Because I don't have one. Oh, it tells me when to stand and stuff like that. If I haven't stand, it wants me to stand at least for like a minute or a couple of minutes, an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I enjoy that aspect of it. Okay, Apple. Oh, girl, I got everything Apple. You know me. I love my Apple products because <laughs> I know how to use them effectively. <laughs> I know that's right. I need me. Um... So speaking of um, Apple products, how's, how's dating been since COVID? Because I know, you know, we can't really, we're not supposed to be really meeting up with people. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like, you know, you know, I'm single. Ain't nobody done locked me down. You know, I've been single for over a year now. I'm very content in, you know, staying COVID free. Yeah. But like, how are we supposed to like, how are we supposed to, you know, date in this pandemic? Like what is wrong and what is not wrong? <laughs> like, I know. Mm, 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 mm. dating is not one of my strong suits for the simple fact that I Rosina Ray have been single for nine years now um now there have been people that I've come in contact with we like each other we click mm -hmm. and it's just always been we like each other we click I am always the type when I see something in somebody I know that I want to be with them. I could see myself being with this person, but mm. I've noticed that maybe I'm a bit too forward. And just because somebody expresses, oh, I want to be with you or I like you, I feel like a real man would act on those feelings. Um, it wouldn't just be something to say. Your actions would speak for themselves. So with me these days, to be honest, dating is not in my forecast. I'm not the type of person, mainly because of COVID, I'm not going out there to try to meet people, especially in my area. I'm very cautious of that. And then like with me catching COVID, I'm afraid to put myself in that setting. So I don't know if I've told you this before, but with me and dating, for whatever reason, it don't matter if I've lived in California, if I've lived in Georgia, if I've lived in, well, I live in Texas, if I've lived in any state in my life, I seem to always attract men from Indiana, from back home. It's something about them that is different, you know, and it never fails. Even if I post on my social media where I live, they always see that, you know, that's where I stay. And even if I tell them I don't live where you live, it's like they still want to pursue me as far as trying to talk to me, showing that they're interested. And I'm all down for a good conversation and, you know, being a little flirty, flirty. But I'm looking for something real, something long lasting, a man with a good head on his shoulders and a man with a good, <laughs> but um, a good heart. That's what I was saying. Okay. A good heart. Um, I just want somebody that's for me, somebody that's not for everybody, somebody who's honest and has, hold on, hold on. How do you mute on here? Chelsea. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, I got muted. And this is the Melanin University, and we are taking a short break. <laughs> short break over, short break over. So, um, yeah, um, it's just very hard for me. You know, I'm very forward about my feelings. If I like you, I'm going to tell you. If I love you, I'm going to tell you. 
And I feel like at times it's going to scare the man who's not ready for that type of commitment right then and there. And that's okay. But I'm not going to be the type to try to um, restrict my feelings. Um, I'm going to tell you how I feel, even if you don't feel the same way, because I would like for somebody to do the same with me. Like, if you like me, let me know. If I'm doing something you don't like, let me know. Honesty is truly valued. And it's just very hard for me. You know, I have people in my inbox, my DMs, my this, my that, who literally all live back home in Indiana. And it kind of bothers me for the simple fact, like, I don't live in Indiana. For a time, it was like, I did think I needed to move back home mm -hmm. because I feel like my husband is back in Indiana. Is Indiana where I want to live? No. Do I want to find love? Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's confusing to me because- Why do you feel like it's there though? Why do you feel like it's back in Indiana? For the simple fact that I only attract men from back home. Girl. You attract men from all over. Mainly back home. No lie. Mainly back home. Mainly back home. Like 90% of the people that try to talk to me, they're from back home. And then also with me not being a social person that goes out and does this, everybody I talk to is online. You know, like it's, yeah. it's a cool type of thing. And that has been my struggle since I left Indiana. In 2015, that has been my struggle where these past six years, you would think, you would think that I would find somebody in my state. And like the last person I was dealing with, I was living in Georgia. I was still single, but I was living in Georgia. He was from back home. It's always, it's always been like that. It's always been like that. Even if I try to put myself out to meet people in my state, the one from Indiana is going to catch my attention even more because I don't know, Indiana men, their vibe, their mentality, just the way they communicate. The I get them. Indiana, I get them. The Indiana man. Look, girl, girl, you mad you with Indiana Jones? Uh, that's what I'm about to call him. Oh. because it's just stressful but realistically I would like to have a man find me who already comes in knowing what he wants I'm not going to say knowing what he wants as far as me but knowing that he wants a relationship he doesn't want a relationship and not playing any type of games like don't play with my heart don't play with my emotions because the moment I come out and say this is how I feel that's how I feel. And I'm also not the type of person that's going to try to talk to multiple men at the same time. A lot of women will say, uh, you should be Lori Harvey in these dudes. And I don't have the patience to deal with more than one person. So it's like, I'm kind of limiting myself to who may actually be out there. Ideally, I do want to meet somebody within my area but I've also told myself if I meet somebody in another state who shows interest, who does this, who does that, I would try to see if we can compromise in somehow, some way where we could either like move to where each other are and just try to give it a shot and make it work. So Chelsea, dating for me, Rosina Ray, is such a very hard task and I'm not trying to I'm, I am trying to big myself up. I'm a great person, great personality. You definitely are. You know, I know how to make these men feel that sound like I was a hoe, but I'm not a hoe. <laughs> I just know how to make these men feel. I know how to compliment them. I know how to brighten up their day. I know how to inspire them and just be there for them as I would want anybody to be there for me. Even if it is in the most friendliest way, I still show these men respect and I love everybody I come in contact with, I do. But I feel like one day when the time is right, I will meet that person for me. But to be totally honest, on January 16th, 
2021, 21, I honestly don't think that I have ever met, not ever, I'm not gonna say ever met. I don't think I've come across that person that is for me and that's okay. So it kind of goes back to your initial question in the beginning, like how have I been doing and the, the, you know, knowing that you want something, but you're not getting it, it does make you a bit more patient. It makes you kind of want to love yourself even more and show yourself that, you know, you are worthy of having these things someday, just not today. But even if you don't get it today, don't stop working on yourself because the person that you want they're working on themselves too. That's how I look at it. If you're working everybody on is yourself, always working on themselves. Or not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was supposed to say. Let me retract that real quick. So <laughs> let me retract that statement. Some people are working every day to change themselves. Other people are just simply toxic and just don't know. Or they know they just don't care to change. Exactly. So I feel like the person for me. He's currently working on himself. He's possibly going through these same feelings that I'm having. And when it's time for us to meet and um, what's the word people cross paths, mm. cross paths. Maybe we have cross paths. I don't <laughs> really know. I don't know how to say that word. Paths, paths. Yeah, no, paths. no, no. Just paths. P-A-T-S. Paths. 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 Now you got paths. me doing it. Paths. We, we even if we have come in contact with each other, <laughs> even if we have come in contact with each other, I don't know. I just know that one day, one day it's going to happen. And, you know, I'm just waiting on that one day. It may be five years, 10 years. It may be tomorrow that I meet the person for me. I just know that I'm going to keep my eyes open, my heart open, my options open. And most and important, do you boo, and just do you. Exactly, that's all I can you do. Live your best life to the fullest. That's all I can do. So I have hope. You know, the old me would have been like, "There's nobody out there for me." You know, these men just want to talk to me, and it's easier to talk to me because I don't live in their same state and blah blah blah. But the new me knows that. The God that I know and love so much, he can make a way out of non-believers. And I was once a non-believer. So I just know when the time is right, I'll know. I'll know. I will know. I'll know. So what about you, Chelsea? I know you <laughs> said you've been single for a year. Is there anybody special in your life? I have a lot of special people in my life. <laughs> I got, I, I got special ed. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, I have. Um, <laughs> I don't have anybody special. Special, like you know, I'm. I'm single. You know, I'm happily single for over a year. You know, I feel like this whole year and months has been a reflecting moment. Like I mm-hmm. feel like in. And if you just get out of a relationship at any time, like, I feel like the period after that, <clears throat> you should take time and reflect on yourself, uh, what things you want to change, you know, because I feel like everyone, even if like, you know, the person, like, if you know who is wrong in the relationship, I feel like if it ends, it's equally everyone's because I feel like everyone has stuff that they can work on everyone's mm-hmm. not perfect like we all make mistakes like you know we all have times and periods when we're at our lowest and like you know I just know that you know <clears throat> my last relationship didn't work like you know and I'm okay with that like I have no like I feel like Maybe a year ago, I may had some resentment uh, just based off how things had ended. But I mean, now it's like, I I wish him all the best, you know, God bless his soul. 
you know, I just know that he's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> know that because you like coffee anyway. My cup of anything, to be a matter of fact. But I mean, I just, <laughs> I just like you know, yeah. I don't have no bad feelings. Like if I were to see him, it's all love. Like I wouldn't say anything. Like I just you know, kind of act like he didn't exist. But, you know, there's just no, there, but I just, because I just feel like there's no reason for you to talk. Like, I mean, I don't, I feel like if things, if I can let things go and I can be cool, but I'm not going to be your friend. I'm not going to fake with you. I'm just going to be cool. As in the part where I'm not going to just be in your face trying to whip your ass. Because <laughs> I'm too grown for that. And we don't have time. So yeah. So in that 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 regards, that's how that is. But you know, I'm single, living my best life. You know, I always like when I'm single sometimes because you know, you get to spend all your money on yourself. Like that's true. I think Spoiler. you know, I like having that type of control over my life as in like my finances, because I feel like when I'm in relationships, it kind of like gets you know, you, it's, it's another job. Like you have to put that much, you know, of your time, energy, and money into that. Then, you know, everything has to, you know, you have to divide everything. And I feel like if you don't have that right person, especially if you live together, like if you don't have that right person with you, it's just going to, it's not going to work. If you guys are not on the same page, it's not going to work. So having that, What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Let me just be honest. Like, it feels good to be able to pay my rent and, you know, not have to worry about no money missing. <laughs> Let's just say that. Like, let me just be honest. Because, like, one of my past issues with my ex is that, like, you know, I felt like I was always putting out money constantly. Like, he never had, like, we, when, you know, when you, when you're, I feel like when you're in a relationship, and you live together, it's either like y'all y'all talk and work things out however y'all want. But how I see it, <laughs> you either pay the rent and someone else pays the utilities and like does the groceries and stuff like that, or y'all split everything down the middle 50-50. I feel that I feel like that's equal because whatever the rent is, I mean, depending on what it is. Like that should be equal to what you're spending on utilities and groceries and household items. True. And then like, you know, everything else is separate. Like, I, I feel like that's how like I wanted things to go, but it felt like, you know, neither one of those options work. <laughs> and <laughs> it was getting very frustrating not being able to like, you know, I feel like in a relationship, you need to be able to take time for yourself and buy things that you like. But I mean, if you're constantly, you know, pushing out money and the other person doesn't have any, you know, excuse to why they don't have it. Can't contribute. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't, it, it has to be an equal contribution to the pot base. It really does. Like, yeah, it, it ain't gonna work. It's really not, so more power to us it's gonna come like i'm glad oh, that we yeah. aren't those type of women who are quick to jump into relationships just because we need somebody like we love ourselves enough to be okay alone and i pray yeah to work on yourself yeah i pray for the women who feel the need to always want a man even if it's the wrong man because i feel like that's what it's going to be until you realize it's okay that i'm okay I mean, I can't talk. It's okay that I'm alone. I'm not going to keep jumping into these. Like, just take time to yourself. Mm -hmm. Heal yourself. Because I honestly do not believe anybody on this earth. You cannot keep jumping in and out relationships and think that you're healed and you can go on to the next. No, heal yourself properly before even trying to open up your heart again. Because then you're taking damage from what somebody else brought you and then you're bringing another person's damaged goods onto you and you're going to end up damaged like just take the time to yourself to just be okay even if it takes years just as long as you're okay that's all that matters but don't rush into something that don't rush into anything that's all I'm going to say don't rush into shit 
when it comes to relationships because that energy that energy swap oh my gosh girl it's real yeah it is real like that's why I was just like you know I feel like even now like I could get into another relationship it's been enough time like I feel like I'm I'm ready but also I don't want to be in another relationship with someone <clears throat> until I know that we're both on the same page as well as like the same path I feel like a lot of times right now like especially with COVID I mean, right now it's not the time to be dating like I mean to be honest with you like <laughs> I don't I mean I can we can't see each other we can't go out like you know if you come over here then I'm taking a risk that you getting COVID like I don't know who you be seeing That's like, true. You know, if you're sneaking over here I don't know who you be sneaking else to see it like Unless we unless we live together before COVID, like yeah, that that's out the window. Trust me. Yeah. So that's another reason why I'm afraid, very much afraid. Like you don't know who somebody else has come in contact with, and then they may be coming over all the time, and then here you go getting sick and catching COVID. So yeah. it's like. I honestly right now prefer the virtual thing. If I ever was to talk to somebody on that level, um, I think I would take that chance, but I would have to make sure that they have gotten like their COVID test before I plan on coming out there vice okay. versa. Yeah. Like we got to protect one another. Um, now, if you're going to go take some tests and y'all got, y'all, you know, your little shot and stuff, you you cool. Like, yeah. you, have, so you got both doses of the shot and stuff like that, because I know my mom just got hers. But Wait, uh, the vaccine? Yeah. How is she? Because I'm afraid of that. She had hers for over a week and a half now. She's fine. She's not experiencing any type of issues, thank God. I had asked her, too. I was like, how long has it been? She's like, it's been like a week and a half. I'm like, ooh okay well she ain't dead that's good thank god because you know we love mama yeah i have seen like <laughs> a lot of cases where it hasn't turned well so i'm glad that okay so question yeah the vaccine is supposed to prevent you from getting covid okay don't get me i, I don't know but i feel like it's supposed to like I guess, yeah, I guess in the way, I mean, it's a vaccine, so it's supposed to cure it, but I guess, like, you can still get it if you don't have the other shot. So you have to get, like, two things. So it even I feel like, well, from what I was told by a source, a friend, um, shout out to um, Ronnie. A Ronnie! I don't know Ronnie. Ronnie. But what up, Ronnie? <laughs> she was our old content curator uh but uh she still gives me little tidbits here and there but uh she told me and you know this is all, all hearsay so we can't we're gonna have to look this up so please do not take anything with that what i say out of seriousness uh i heard that it just stays in your system the first shot only three to four months and then, or a couple of weeks, I think, or something like that. I think that's what it was, like a couple of weeks. And then you have to get the other part. But what they don't know is like, so you guys have tested it when you guys have given the vaccine after a couple of weeks to whatever you're testing it on in the human trials. They released it knowing that they had human trials that weren't successful. So like, I just feel like they're just releasing it and seeing what's going on what could go on because you know everything's always about population control I feel like <laughs> you know nine times out of ten you know everybody wants to say they put in the um the chips inside the vaccine it's just you know who knows it's just scary to me because it is I just feel like I really feel like nothing can truly prevent us from getting anything um not unless we wash our hands and wear a mask and stay in the house like i don't think um well um i believe there hasn't been anyone who's gotten covid by just like staying away from everyone and like you know quarantining them their house mm -hmm. like i don't believe there's anyone i mean i've been okay 
so far. Like I haven't caught it again. Like I feel like I had it back like when it wasn't a thing. Cause I know it, everything started in March, but I had it like end of December of 2019 going into January of 2020. I had lost my voice for a whole month and I, you know, talking on the phone, working, I couldn't have that happen. So like I had to push through, which made it worse. So I was straining my voice even more. My coughs, like they were like, ugh, it was miserable. It was so miserable. So I don't ever wish that on anyone. I, you know, I had the shortness of breath, like it was horrible. Like, I just, I just want all of us to just wash our hands and be clean and just try to push through as much as we can. Like, you know, get the vaccine whenever you're able to. Like, I'm not doing it. You said what? I'm not doing it. You're not doing the vaccine? I'm afraid. Like, me being me. Okay. I know I'm afraid too, but at the same time, like if they make it mandatory, there's not much m- much we can really do about it. I don't think. I'm gonna hide. <laughs> you talking about I'm a hide? I'm not. <laughs> Girl, I'm just afraid because I feel like I think about like the flu shot and how I've never had the flu before, but I feel like at the moment I did get a flu shot at times, whatever cold sickness I experienced it was horrible. It was horrible. And I mean, this literally came right after getting like a flu shot. Of course, you know, this- you know, that's how they make the vaccine. They put whatever it is inside of it. And that's and, and whatever it is. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> and it changes each time because, you know, the flu is always ever changing and stuff like that. So I understand it. It's, it's definitely something scary, but at the same time, Hey, if it protects you and your little one. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. You took a job to do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, get more, I would get more information on it. That's what I'm, I, I want to look more into the actual shot to see what's in it. I'm not. I just really wish it would have came out before I had COVID. Then maybe I would have thought about it. But now that I have had COVID and I had to self-quarantine and do all of those things, I kind of feel like if I stay away from the public, if I do stuff like this, if I get my Walmart delivery mm-hmm. with my groceries. Shout out I, to Walmart Plus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not putting myself in harm's way. Like the only thing that would scare me would be my daughter going to school. Because I'm yeah. pretty sure they're going to make her get it. I don't I don't know, I'm just not a person that believes in vaccines. I mean, I don't know. It's just something about needles and shit that <laughs> don't sit right with me. Like y'all made this in what lab? Was I there to see what the shit was that was made? It just kind of scares me because I really, I'm not saying the government is corrupted and they're trying to kill us all, but certain things just really frighten me. Um, and like I said, being that I've experienced COVID, I would think that I'll be the first person to be like, okay, yeah, cool. I want the, but I'm afraid. I'm not going to lie and sit here and act like I'm not. I'm very much afraid of anything. And I feel like with some people, it's going to work just fine. Unfortunately for some people, like with COVID, some people who didn't have weak immune systems died while others that did, they lived. And I remember they were saying, you know, if you have a weaker immune system, you know, it may not end up going well for you. And like shit like that scares me. Like, I want to believe what the media says, but it's like the only person I can truly rely on is God. Like, I'm sorry. And I feel like if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But I am just seriously afraid of a vaccine. I'm just, I'm just. I'm being honest, especially like with COVID vaccine attached to it. I'm afraid of anything that has COVID in front of it. <laughs> so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being honest. I know I shouldn't fear anything, but that's something I really fear. No, I, I do. Understand? Cause I'm a hoe. <laughs> I'm not, girl. See, look. <laughs> Well, it has been lovely talking to you, Ms. Rosina Ray. And of course, you know, you are welcome back at the Melanin University anytime. Thank 
you. I'm thankful for you having me. It was nice to be able to get on here and, you know, just talk to you about things that we both have experienced. So thank you so much for inviting me. I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> and tell everyone where they can find you at mail. Hello, everybody. If you are on Facebook, you can find me by typing in Facebook backslash. Wait, hold on. That's not it. Facebook.com. Pretty much. Okay. If you want to find me anywhere, type in Wild African Rose. You will find me typing in Wild African Rose everywhere. Twitter? No, no, I lied. Don't look for me on Twitter. Snapchat? Don't look for me on there either. You can search for me on Instagram. Wild African Rose. <laughs> <laughs> all right young people you already know where you can find this find this beautiful wild african rose but again until next time thanks for joining us thank you melanin university